Good morning. I'm Rachel Kite, Chair of the CGR Fund Council and Vice President of Sustainable Development at the World Bank. I'm sorry that I can't join you in person, but I'm very glad to have the opportunity to speak with you today, albeit remotely, about one of the most significant development challenges we face, the gender gap in agriculture. Some of you are less familiar with the agriculture sector, so let me take a minute to highlight some of the glaring disparities that face poor female farmers. Globally, only 10 to 20 percent of landowners are women, and in many countries, that number is even lower. In Uganda, for example, women own just 5 percent of the land. Female farmers tend to have smaller plots with poorer soils. They have insecure rights to land and significantly less access to fertilizer, improved seed, credit and agriculture extension. In sub-Saharan Africa, women receive only 5 to 7 percent of agricultural extension training and 10 percent of rural credit, but account for the majority of agricultural workers. And those aren't the only sta cards stacked against women. Female farmers earn less from their labour, are more vulnerable to climate change and natural hazards, and are less able to adapt. But when the playing field is level, women are at least as productive as men, if not more so. In Africa, it's estimated that women farmers could produce 20% more than men if they had access to the same resources. Imagine how much global food production would increase and how many fewer people would go hungry if female farmers received their fair share. Imagine how many more women and men could lead more productive lives, help their communities and countries to prosper if women had better access to new technologies and crop varieties. The CGIR is committed to turning ifs into reality and has a long history of working to ensure that the results of its research benefit and empower rural women. In Eastern and Southern Africa, for example, a program that sought to widen the impact of nutritious and high-yielding beans targeted women using informal channels like community and church groups and distributed affordable packets of seed. The result? The program reached more than 35 million people, increasing household food security, raising women's incomes and improving the health and well-being of their children. Women need to have greater opportunities, not just on the farm, but also in the lab, so that their unique experiences and insights can be shared and brought to bear on agricultural priorities, policies and programmes. To help women succeed in their careers and have greater influence, the CGIR established a programme that provides young female scientists in Africa with mentors, leadership development, access to professional networks and science training. Although these initiatives are important and effective, we need to do more and we need to do better. As part of recent reforms, CGIR has redoubled its efforts, knowing that it will not achieve lasting impact unless it takes gender disparities into account in all aspects of its work. To accomplish this, CGIR has taken a number of steps, mainstream gender research and analysis throughout its entire portfolio and established a network of experts on gender and agriculture. It requires all research programs to have a gender strategy and it's committed to measuring and assessing the impact of its work to ensure that good intentions and best efforts actually lead to tangible improvements in people's lives. Ultimately, the results will have to speak for themselves because when barriers come down, barriers that prevent women from fully contributing on the farm, in the lab, in their homes and in government offices, everyone benefits. Food security increases, poverty drops, children are better nourished and environmental stewardship improves. With these various barriers comes a need for a diverse range of approaches to address them. For example, IFPRI, one of the CGIR centres, recently developed in collaboration with Feed the Future and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, an innovative tool that measures the empowerment, agency and inclusion of women in agriculture to better document obstacles and constraints, because if we can't identify the challenges, we can't overcome them. The CGIR research programme on aquatic agricultural systems, which has convened this workshop, is tackling the issue from another angle. It's committed to understanding the gender norms and attitudes that underlie the symptoms of gender inequality, the gaps in access to or control of resources, believing that sustainable change requires attention to their wider social causes. So armed with a full arsenal of approaches, CGIR is more committed than ever to meeting the needs of poor rural women 
and empowering female farmers. Because advancing gender equality is not only the right thing to do, it's the economically smart thing to do, but it's also necessary in order to unleash agriculture's full potential for improving lives in developing countries. We certainly can't do it alone. We need to work in close collaboration with experts like you, and I hope that this workshop will provide opportunities to forge or strengthen effective partnerships so that we can pursue our mutual goals together. Thank you again for this opportunity. I look forward to hearing about the outcomes of your meeting and the plans for going forward, and I celebrate your leadership on such an important issue.